Hello, this is Jeff Hicks, and this is a demo for my Windows Server 2008 PowerShell training course. I hope you enjoy it. So what about copying files in PowerShell? Well, there is the copy item commandlet, or we can just use the alias of copy. And the syntax is very much what you are probably used to in copying files in the CMD shell. One thing to remember, though, about copy item is nothing is written to the pipeline unless you use dash pass through. So you can run copy item, but you won't see anything back to your prompt unless you use that common parameter. If you need to copy entire folder trees, you want to maintain that structure, be sure to use the dash container and dash recurse parameters. The destination will be created when you do that uh, if it does not exist on the target folder or directory. However, if you are copying just files to another directory, make sure that that directory exists first, otherwise you'll get really weird results. So here's one example. I'm going to copy the work folder structure to eWork backup. So this would take all of the files and all of the subfolders and basically copy that over to eWork backup. Or if I want to copy just a certain types of files, in this case, say the XML files in the scripts directory to eWork backup XML, that's how I would do it. I would want to make sure that that XML folder exists though before I did my copy command. Moving files is not that much different than copying a file. We're going to use the move item commandlet. It has an alias of move um, and a couple other ones like mv, but move is pretty straightforward. If you've used that in the CMD shell, you should find it very similar in PowerShell. Like copy item, the move item command does not write anything to the pipeline. So if you want to see results or see the objects, use dash pass through. One thing to be aware of when you are moving files or folders, the destination folder must exist. So make sure that that is created before you move the files, otherwise you'll start getting either errors or you'll get results that are not what you are expecting. You can move directories, but only on the same drive. So I can't move an entire folder from drive C to drive E. Now you could copy it and then delete it, but if you want to use the move command, which basically does that same process, uh, the directories have to be on the same drive. However, you can move files across drives. That's pretty simple to do. So here's some example. If I want to move the data files, data.txt, data something.txt, I can move them from my work folder on the C drive to the data directory on the E drive. I just need to make sure that the data folder exists. If I want to see the actual files as they're moved, then I would just append dash pass through to the end of that command. Or to move an entire folder, I would do something like this. I'm going to take the files subfolder that's under work and I'm going to move it basically to the root of C. So I'm going to end up with C files. And so then that's where all the data will be. And that move again will happen without any output unless you use dash pass through. By now, I hope you're getting the picture that this really isn't too much different than what we've been doing in the CMD world. So to delete files, we're going to use remove item or take advantage of the alias del. This commandlet has a dash recurse parameter. So if you want to clear out all subfolders as well, that's what you would be looking for. There is also dash force. If you have hidden or read only files, you want to make sure that those also are deleted. So you can use any combination of these parameters, but you'll definitely want to look at help when you're deleting and test to make sure you fully understand how this commandlet works. In fact, take advantage of the dash what if and or dash confirm parameter so you can verify that you are deleting what you expect to be deleting, or at the very least make sure you have a backup before you go and start deleting files. But here's how the command would look like. I can do a directory of my G drive, searching for all the BAK files recursively. And then every backup file that I find, I'm just going to delete it. Well, actually, I'm just going to look to see what I would delete by using the dash what if. If I ran that command without what if, 
it would have deleted all of the backup files on the G drive. A very handy tool if you're trying to do a little cleanup on one of your file servers. Or if I want to delete an entire directory, I can just run the del command, specify the path to the folder, and I'm using dash recursion dash force to delete all subfolders and all data from G data. There may be times when you want to take a file or folder and take advantage of the NTFS compression to try to save a little bit of space. The best practice has always been to compress a folder and then that will compress all of the files and any new files that get created to that folder will automatically be compressed. Although it is possible to compress files by themselves. And we're going to do this with the Win32 directory class and WMI. If you want to compress just a file, then we're going to use the sim data file class. So once we have our reference to the either the directory or the files, then we're going to invoke the compress method. It really doesn't take any parameters. We are just call compress and it will do its thing. If you want to uncompress, there is a corresponding uncompress uh, method as well. So here's an example using invoke wmy method. In this example here, I'm grabbing the work folder that's on the C drive on Chicago-FP01, and I'm going to compress it. So this will compress the folder, all of its contents, and then any new files that are added to work will automatically be compressed. Again, this is using the NTFS compression. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training, please visit www.trainsignal.com.